there. So the next uh, friction hitch application I'd like to show is rope ascent. And a quick note, um, the type of rope ascent that I'm about to show here makes the most sense if you have a large object like a backpack hanging from the end of the rope. And it means you need to add these rope grabs above and you may not be able to load up a belay device in guide mode, for example, which could be used to ascend or you couldn't load a micro traction in pulley mode and pull it easily up. Um, you'd need to use the micro traction rope grab mode. You'd need to use a uh, tib lock from uh, Petzl or you can use friction hitches. And uh, in this mode, you're gonna need one friction hitch above another friction hitch and the top friction hitch would be attached to your waist and the lower friction hitch would maybe attached to your waist or maybe open, depending on whether you can back the system up and then would have a foot loop attached to it. So a lot of times when I'm traveling out in Alpine environments, I have a friction hitch on me that I use for backing up my rappel. And that's a 17 inch long loop made out of five millimeter uh, Sterling brand nylon accessory cord. And so it's not long enough for me to plug that onto my waist and use it efficiently as a waist prusik because every time I push this up, I'm only going to gain like four to six inches of throw or four to six inches of upward movement. So one thing you can do in order to modify this is for someone of my size, this works quite well. I'll just use a single length runner, which I have on me if I'm climbing technical routes where I need to extend protection anyway and I just basket hitch or just fold it over and through the end and then I clip that in to my belay loop and now that makes a hitch that's almost exactly the right height for me to manipulate when I'm hanging. When I'm hanging I can still reach up and get to the top of the hitch um, and just above it so that's pretty comfortable and gives me a good amount of throw. Kind of a good measurement for this is when the hitch is fully engaged on the carabiner through your belay loop on your harness, you want the hitch to reach just about to the top of your head. So this one I could probably have an inch taller, but that's pretty good right there. So that's the first piece of a uh, Prusik system if you're using two friction hitches to ascend a rope that you might want to construct, and that's the length that you would want. The diameter difference of the material that you're using to construct the friction hitch relative to the diameter of the rope you're ascending, usually having a three millimeter diameter difference or greater is sufficient to make sure that your hitch binds properly. So if this is a nine millimeter climbing rope and I have a five millimeter hitch, that's a difference of four millimeters, so that's gonna work well. That also means this could be an eight millimeter glacier travel rope and a five millimeter hitch is still gonna work well to travel up that. The hitch that I choose typically is the Prusik hitch because it binds really strongly. And then once it's unloaded, I can usually make it travel quite well versus some other hitches can be really difficult to unbind after they've been bound. And others like the auto block if they're not wound up enough and it's not gripping tightly enough, when they're weighted, they can sometimes slip under load. So I will use auto blocks sometimes to attach at the waist, but there's a little more risk involved in that. Cool, we'll take a look at the next part in just a second. All right, so the next option for sending a rope is to have a friction hitch that's been pre-tied and already set up for that specific application. So this particular friction hitch I might bring with me if I'm in a polar environment like Alaska or Greenland or um, Antarctica and I'm dealing with really large crevasses and really large packs and the probability of a crevasse fall is pretty high. And the reason that it's kind of particular to those locations is in a, a place with a melt freeze snowpack having a friction hitch this long, if I pre-attach it to the rope and I'm doing glacier travel, you know, and this is kind of here like that, it can become a tripping hazard, especially in steep terrain. And that's one of the biggest causes of crevasse falls. It's not a bridge collapse, but a slip, trip and fall hazard, specifically in maritime or melt freeze snowpacks. But in this case, we're not talking about maritime environments. We're talking about polar regions with more continental type snowpacks 
probability of a pop through falling through a crevasse bridge is really high. And uh, I want a, an efficient way to be able to escape from the crevasse. So I might have something like this pre-rigged on me as a waste prusik. And this has been pre-measured and cut for my height. So when I slide this up, it's right at the top of my head when it's engaged. And if I sit down on this, this but, but, um, is actually, sorry, this is very common, cross-loading carabiners, because when you're dealing with friction hitches, you have what's called cyclical loading, where it's slack and then it's under tension and slack and under tension. Cross-loaded carabiner is not much of an issue. It gets scary. You think it's quite scary when you're looking at it, but in reality, these carabiners, when cross-loaded, are rated to seven or eight kilonewtons, which is significantly more than the friction hitch material you're climbing anyway. So the biggest issue with cross-loaded carabiners is if the gate isn't done up properly. Like here, I'm using a screw lock because that's what I had on hand, but doing glacier travel, I tend to use triple action carabiners um, or twin gate carabiners if I'm worried about freezing. And uh, those, it's less of an issue if it's cross-loaded because it's not gonna come unclipped. So coming unclipped is really the big issue there. Um, so just something to think about, All right? So you can see this is right at the top of my head when it's engaged. And now if I sit down on that, I can still reach it quite easily. So that's gonna play a big role once I start uh, putting a foot loop in here and then friction hitching or pressing up a rope. All right, let's take a look at the foot loop. All right, so I am back on my waist friction hitch here. So using a waist prusik, and the waist prusik is gonna be above. It's right at the top of my head. And I've put on a um, another prusik, and this prusik, a lot of times I'll have really close, if not the same length as the top one. And in this system right now, I have a huge backpack. So let's say it's an 80 pound backpack. That'd be pretty darn big or 60 pound pack hanging. So there's not a good way for me to haul this up, tie a knot and clip it into my waist as a backup when I ascend. Anytime you're, you have an ascent system and, uh, and you're climbing up a rope, it's nice to be clipped into the rope, either tied into the very end, and then you're on belay of some kind, or you're self belaying on a type of system, either using knots in there, using a gree gree, belaying through a clove hitch, something like that. But in that case, this case, I can't do that effectively because I have a rope under tension. So I'm trying not to rely on one friction hitch alone uh, for my life. I'd rather at least, at the very least, have two friction hitches clipped in. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use two friction hitches into my waist and I'm gonna get a foot loop out of this at the same time. So this next friction hitch, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tie an overhand knot and the overhand knot I'm tying really up close, maybe as close as I can get it to the hitch itself. So I'm just, just a flat overhand. Okay, so I have a flat overhand and I'm trying to make sure there's very minimal space in here. And now, between this overhand and this friction hitch, I'm going to clip a non-locking carabiner. It could be a locking carabiner, it could be a non-locking carabiner, but in this case, I don't have to have it be a locking carabiner. So I'll just clip a non-locker in there and you'll see why in just a minute. Okay, and I'm gonna clip this other end into my waist. So currently, I don't have any way of prussicking up and out of a crevasse because I have two waist prussics. So if I were to fall in and hang, I can't stand up. I need a foot loop still. So that's the reason that this carabiner is attached here is so I can quickly and easily attach a foot loop. Now there's a lot of crevasse rescue systems where the foot loop is incorporated in and you stuff it in your po pocket. And I've used those systems in the past and they work fairly well. One of the problems with those systems, a lot of times, especially as you're walking, the foot loop can work its way out from being wrapped around your harness, from being stuffed in your pocket. Um, and sometimes it's just a little clunky. So this is a way we can have a separate foot loop that's easily attached. So you can have your foot loop pre-wrapped and I'll just clip it into that carabiner using this as sort of a, like a master point. And then I can just pull on this package and it comes out. So that's an option right there. 
Um, that's usually what I'll do if I have a pack and a chest harness on. And if I don't have a packer and a chest harness on, then I might have a double length runner just folded over my chest and I take that off and I just clip that into this carabiner. Now it doesn't really matter that this isn't attached with a locking carabiner here because my life isn't attached to that. My life is attached to these locking carabiners down here on the harness. I'm only using this to gain vertical uplift as I try to climb up the rope. So here's what it looks like. Oh, actually, one other thing to mention is the material that I'm using for my foot loop. Dyneema is totally fine. If I have crampons on, I'm not going to puncture or break this Dyneema. And when I have Alpine boots on, I'm not really worried about how comfortable this feels underfoot because I have these really rigid boots. I'm going to take the brunt of that. Dyneema is nice because it's a little bit more compact and it doesn't absorb water. Um, therefore, it's less likely to freeze and get stiff like nylon. But nylon will work as well. There's not a really big... Um, there's no, there's no safety difference between the two materials for this application, really. Okay, so I'm going to sit down on this here. <laughs> kind of limited space here in my apartment. I can step into the foot loop. I can create an extra loop if I need to in that foot loop. Step into that guy. And then I stand up, and that allows me to push my prusik hitch up on my waist. And then I can raise up my foot loop again. Yeah. It's nice to do a little girth hitch in here. There we go. And then I can stand up again, sit on this, raise my foot loop up, so on and so forth. A little difficult to show in uh, such compact quarters. A little easier on a tree outside. Maybe I can add that in later. But what you should see is if this friction hitch were to get chopped for some reason, like my partner was cleaning the lip of a crevasse and a big ice piece came down and chopped that, probably I'm going to get beamed by that too, and it would be bad in a lot of ways. But you can see this hitch is still under my waist, so all is not lost. I'm not falling to the bottom of the crevasse. And you can also see in the system why I couldn't use the rope to back it up because of that heavy load of my backpack. Ideally, I'd be able to transfer that backpack at some point to another, to another loop that's being lowered down to me, maybe before I started descending, but this may be your best option, especially if you're kind of performing the guide role and your only way of getting out is if you rescue yourself. So that's a quick and dirty way to ascend out of a crevasse or up rope using just two friction hitches and you can't back up the system with the rope and you can't load another device like a micro traction or an ATC in guide mode down below off your waist. Hopefully this was helpful.